We don't even need an intro on this video. It's part two, it's time to run this thing. We've got the radio, let's pop the body off and get the batteries installed. My batteries came for it, check this out. This is what we're working with. We got some Gen Zays, 6800s, 120C, let's go. All right, these fit in the battery tray nicely. We might add a little bit of foam on top of them just to hold them in place a little bit better. All right, we're gonna stick a little bit of foam on the top just to hold it in place, but that's gonna be the setup. And um, I already calibrated the speed controller, so we're pretty much ready to go. We got the batteries in. I just used a little bit of foam actually that the batteries came with in the box. Plug it in. All right, we're gonna power this thing up. Radio's on. Oh yeah. Now, check this out. As you can see, the receiver is flashing red quickly. That means that it doesn't have signal for the temperature sensor that usually comes on the stock motor. It should still work this way. It's possible it might go into limp mode. If it does, I might just bring this little sensor with me and plug it in if it does cause issues, but I'm gonna try to run it this way first and see um, if it stays happy. It shouldn't be an issue, but we'll see if it is. A little bit nervous to hit the throttle in here. Um, I don't really have a way of holding it. But, um, okay, I'm gonna, Kat's got the controller. She's just gonna give a very, very slight, <laughs> slight, slight bit of throttle. Oh yeah. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. All right, give me that back. Take, your, take, take it off the trigger. Okay. Gearing wise, we're running 26, 46. Just keep that in mind. All right, it's go time. Let's take this thing outside. We're out here. I've got a temperature gauge here and we're just gonna see how warm the motor is before I turn anything on, just kind of as a control here, just to see what we're working with. We're about 69.9, about, yeah, about 70. It's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit at the moment. Radio's on, turn the truck on. Let's throw the cover on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it feels pretty good. Here, let's walk this way a little bit. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, this is, this is aggressive. Okay, this is very aggressive. I'm like not even quarter throttle yet. Oh boy. I will say the TSM is acting really weird. I'm just gonna turn off the TSM, it's acting a little funny. Dude, this, okay. Oh, I am really liking this. All right, literally I haven't even hit half throttle yet. Haven't even hit half throttle yet. This thing is absurd. This is absurd. I'm going to try the best I can. This parking lot seems big, but it gets really small really fast, especially with a truck like this right now. So I'm gonna try to go to the other end there a little bit and just see if I can get above half throttle or not, um, and then just do a run right by us, okay? So don't worry, it just stand in line with me. That's still half throttle. That's still half throttle. We haven't reached half throttle yet. Oh my gosh, okay. Dude, this thing is absurd. I'm gonna try to roll onto it a little bit. So let's stand a little bit further this way. I'm gonna ease into it. Dude, it just wants to fly. It just wants to fly. To the other parking lot? I think we have to, oh boy. You gotta be careful with this thing. This thing is a weapon, absolute weapon. We need a bigger parking lot. I can't get over half throttle right now. So we're gonna try to go around somewhere else, maybe the front of the building or something and see if I can get over half throttle because this is just absurd. So it's a good thing we stopped to go to another spot because 
Apparently, I forgot to tighten the grub screw on the pinion gear and it actually was about to fly off. And it doesn't even look like there's any thread locker. So I must've just put it together and then got really excited. <laughs> and now we're here, but the nice part is this is a D pinion. So it didn't just, you know, rotate on the motor shaft. It did stay on for a little bit, but it didn't fly off. The grub screw obviously uh, is nowhere to be found, but I have some more of those. So we're gonna put a bit of thread lock. Usually I would wait for the thread lock to set but obviously for the sake of this video, we're just gonna send it right away. Ah. Okay, now we're good. That was obviously too much. So we're gonna run it through my finger a little bit. Just get it in the threads, take off any excess. <laughs> Cat's yelling at me for wiping on my shirt. And then we're gonna get this little grub screw back in. And it went this way. Okay, good. Back in action. And the mesh still feels really good, so we should be good to go. So for anybody asking me whether or not running this motor sensorless is an issue, I mean, look, it's pretty smooth off the line. See? No problems at all with cogging or anything like that. So without running the sensor wire, it seems like it's no problem for this thing. Okay? So you filming? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to go down this way. I think that's a pothole over there. I'll try to avoid that. And I'm going to come this way. We're trying to get these speed runs done as quickly as we can for you guys because I got to go to work, man. All right. Okay, are we, are we clear here? I think coast is pretty much clear on that side. All right, let me go that way, around the pothole. Are we clear on your, behind you, Kat? Uh, car coming. Car. Hold off there for a second. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. All right, one more, and then I'm going to take the wheelie bar off and see uh, if we can get this thing to a standing backflip. <laughs> Dude. It's like already just like absurd. Come on, man. Look at this thing. How's everything looking? Oh, yeah. Everything looks great. Oh, so good. Here, come over here for a second. You feel me? Wonder what would happen. You think it'd go under the gate? Oh, okay. Here, come check this out. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Here, stand on that side. Let's see if we can backflip this gate and hopefully not go on the other side of it. Ooh. Oh! I hit the throttle. I should have hit the brakes. Dude. She good? Oh, she's good. All right, one more try. Uh, that's kind of hard. <laughs> oh man. Dude, we're bashing out here. We're bashing. All right, let's do it again. Try to land it. Oh, double backflip. Are you serious? That was like half throttle. Come on. <laughs> oh man, another one, another one. Oh my God. Dude. This thing is insane. What is going on? All right, let's check this thing out. How's she doing? Is she all right? How is she doing? Oh, she wants more. She wants, she wants more. What else can I do? Let's see if I could do like a little wall ride. Hold on, let me just try to ride through the grass for a second. Look, here, ready? 
Okay, okay. All right, we got traction now. This thing is just amazing. It's just amazing. Okay, all right, all right. I need to take the wheelie bar off. Okay, it's gonna break if I keep doing that. Let me just quickly grab the wrench. Based on what just happened, we're gonna go ahead and take the wheelie bar off because on the grass we have a lot more traction. And I think, wait, there's my two five. Here we go. And I think if I take the wheelie bar off, we might be able to do some standing backflips on the grass. Because these tires, we can definitely tell they like the grass. Yeah. Set these ones in here. Now we have no wheelie bar. I've never run the XRT without a wheelie bar, so I have no idea whether or not the wheelie bar really helps keep this thing on the ground or not. But let's see what happens. So let's just see. We have a little bit more traction on the grass. No wheelie bar. Let's see what happens when I just come around here and punch the throttle. Okay. Boom, like nothing, like nothing. Here, Kat, let's see if we can get a little bit closer to check that out. That was dialed. Here, let's get low and see. See that again. Ready? Oh, oops, I screwed that one up. Oh, nice. Now let's try that again. Ready? Oh yeah, dialed. Are you serious? It's like nothing. All right, I like no wheelie bar. Okay. Dude. Ready? Another. I'm loving this. These are so dialed. Oh! Are you kidding me? <laughs> new favorite truck, new favorite setup. This is literally this. This, literally this. Okay. Uh, should we do a few more backflips off the fence? What time is it? 57? All right, we're gonna do a couple more backflips, the fence, then we gotta go to work, and I'll see you inside, and we'll talk about what happened out here, because this is just amazing. Should I just give, give it all? I don't know. Okay, all right. All right. Dude, all right, we're gonna go one more. I'm gonna try to land it try this one more time. I'm going to try to get it as straight as possible so that way I can land it. This thing is, I mean, it's really easy to control in the air, especially with these tires, but now with the added power, with great power, obviously we know the responsibility is there and it's really hard to not give it too much throttle. And then this thing's literally just like turning into a gyroscope. It's just insane. So let me try to line this up a little bit straighter on the fence here. That didn't sound good. Here, let's see what happened. I think the gears just yep. got annihilated. Okay, there there's no more, there, there is no more. Look, here, get a closer look at that. It literally exploded. Where did it even go? I don't know. Oh, it's right here. Oh, there's, there's a piece of it. Of it. Is it hot? Christ. All right, is it hot? Oh man. <laughs> oh man. All right, well, we don't litter, so I'm gonna pick that one up. All right, let's go inside and we'll talk about what happened and how we're gonna fix it because this thing is awesome. Are you serious? This truck is awesome. You saw for yourself, this thing is an absolute beast, okay? I, I can't even believe how powerful it is. It's actually a lot faster than I thought it would be. And I don't know really what I was expecting, but it's actually, it's actually really impressive. A lot more impressive uh, than I thought. I'm not really sure what I was thinking was going to happen. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I really thought I was going to have to gear it up more to go even faster, but it's actually, I feel like it's actually in a really good spot. I think I could actually go maybe a little bit shorter on the gearing than it is, just because it's just so outrageously fast I can't even drive the thing. 
but obviously the tires that are on it are not good for the street. They balloon way too much, definitely too soft, but where these things shine is off-road, and you saw that on the grass, this thing's doing standing backflips like absolutely nobody's business. It's just like, like, like I was saying, it's, it's so dialed. It's like, yeah, um, you know, I'm just driving and boom, standing backflip. Yep, just, I'll just drive and standing backflip, like literally whenever, wherever standing backflip is just, it's just there. I feel like to, to relay how much power it has, think of like, I guess it depends if you've driven one of these stock, but I could say it's probably at least three times what the stock truck is. At least it feels that way. Um, if you've ever driven like a 6S car on 6S, like it's super aggressive. It's like twice that, honestly. It's just like, it's just so aggressive and insane. So obviously we talked about it a little bit, but when you check it out in here, speed controller is solid as a rock. It's perfect, did not move a millimeter. All right, receiver, perfect. It was blinking at me. It was kind of upset because I'm not running the temperature sensors, but no big deal, it was fine. Obviously, the spur gear exploded and the cush drive is pretty chewed up, but all the bearings and everything on the input shaft are still perfect. There's no play in the motor shaft. Everything is literally perfect. I, I'm, I can hear, I can hear everybody in the comments right now. Chris, we told you the spur gear would break. Why don't you just go mod 1.5 or something else? And I certainly could, but I want to see what the stock truck would do with this power system. Literally just drop in brand new truck. I will say that everything was holding up perfectly fine. It was me that decided to continue and go off that fence more and more and more and do it a bunch more times. And I tell you what, on those last couple landings, I might not have let, let go on the throttle trigger and it's possible that it was still under a little bit of power when it landed and as soon as those tires hit the ground and the power was still going through that motor, that's really when, you know, this thing exploded, like physically exploded. There's marks on the inside of the uh, body where the gear exploded. I found a couple more pieces, but here's what's left of it, obviously. It um, failed completely. But that's okay because there's a couple options. Traxxas makes these in hardened steel, okay? When you look at this, it's the lighter colored steel. It is steel, but it's not hardened steel. The hardened steel ones are a darker color. Obviously, we're gonna need that on this truck, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the, um, what did I just say? The hardened steel. The hardened steel. I'm gonna go ahead and put the hardened steel gears on here so that way we have a better chance. And I'm gonna uh, replace the pinion gear also just because it got a little bit chewed up as well. I'm debating on going a little bit smaller on the pinion. I can't believe I'm saying that because I honestly don't wanna go backwards um, as far as like speed because it was just so outrageous. But I think it might just help it a little bit because honestly, anything over half throttle is just insane. When this thing was in the air, you, you, I don't know how much you can really tell on video, but like the gyroscopic forces of this truck with these tires on it and this motor, it was just so insane. Like, I wanna jump this thing normally off a ramp just to see like how many backflips we can do because I think it would literally do like 10. It, would, it was that insane, the amount of power going through this thing. And the motor stayed perfectly solid. This motor mount is an absolute beast. Literally nothing shifted whatsoever. I personally believe I was asking for this to happen just because I was landing this thing not so nicely and still under the power. So honestly, I'm more than impressed with this truck. Literally everything held up as, as great as I could have hoped it would. The whole setup, super clean setup, it's working extremely well. I highly recommend it if you want what I would consider uncontrollable power, but in a truck like this, like if you're driving an X-Max, maybe the X-Max you know, being higher off the ground, I, I would say it's too much power for a truck like that. Personally, for my driving style, other people would tell me that it's totally fine, which is great. But for a truck like this, being a lower center of gravity, wider, it can handle this kind of power a little bit better. It's a lot more controllable. And I think this is a definite, definite great platform for this motor system. And I highly recommend it um, if you wanna, if you really want this thing to move out. Everything is totally good, barely a scratch on it. Obviously, we're jumping around in the grass, so not really too much going on here. Taking the wheelie bar off, I, I really think that that helped a lot with the standing backflips um, and a lot of the stunts that we were doing. It 
obviously this acts as the handle and when that's not there anymore, this truck gets a lot heavier because this is actually really convenient to have and I was carrying this truck like this with the batteries in it and it got kind of annoying. So the wheelie bar is nice for the sole fact that it's a really great handle, but I'll just run it without it for now. The wing is a little bit chewed up from doing wheelies, but it's, uh, I think it's worth it to do those standing back flips. That's just, that's just awesome. Who doesn't want that? Obviously, there is absolutely no data in this video because I got really excited the second I saw this thing running and feeling it, it exceeded my expectations and I completely forgot that I had the temp gauge on me. And obviously I didn't have a GPS at the time, but maybe we'll put a GPS on it, but literally it can't put the power down. So I'm not really sure how we're gonna get a top speed run on this thing. We'll have to put belted tires on it to do that. Let me know if you want me to do a top speed run on it with belted tires. I thought I would have to work through a few more bugs. I thought, you know, after the first run, you know, maybe something would come loose or it wouldn't run the way I wanted to or I'd have to go up in the gearing, obviously. But this thing is nasty. It's just disgusting. It's, it's just um, this. This is it right here. Kat, any final thoughts about this truck? I really liked you flipping it off the chain link fence, but I think I was the problem. I was instigating. So Kat was the, so <laughs> thank Kat for the fence because she was the one instigating the fence. If it wasn't for Kat, I probably would have done the fence like maybe three times and called it there and then maybe driven around a little bit more and then this probably wouldn't have happened. But we kept on going and obviously, because we kept on going and I wasn't landing it, it was really hard to control it because it has so much power and I'm not used to it. Um, it was really hard to land this thing on all four wheels. And obviously, um, you know, this was the weak link, but that's okay. We're gonna fix this thing up. Let me know what else you want me to do with this XRT because this thing is unbelievable and we're gonna do a lot more stuff with it. We're gonna send it off the mega ramp. We're gonna see how far it goes. We're gonna see how many backflips it does and Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.